everybody. My name is Scott Paddock, and today we are going to talk about modal improvisation. You are playing a song like Impressions or So What, Freedom Jazz Dance, or Little Sunflower, and you're so excited because there are very few chord changes. So it must be really easy to play, right? The answer is yes and no. Yes, it's easy to play because you don't have to weave your way through chords, but no, it's not that easy to play because you have one scale and you have to figure out how to make that scale sound interesting. So today we are gonna dive deep into modal improvisation and talk about a few strategies to make it sound way more interesting. I'd like to take a quick second just to say that if you are enjoying my content, I would really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, uh, and share it with your friends, and feel free to leave me a comment below. So first, let's talk about why it is called modal improvisation. The main reason is because the chords are not really moving that much. The chord progression is one chord for a long time and maybe another chord for a long time. So there's really not a lot of harmonic moving, movement going on. So we are mainly using one scale, and within that scale, we're gonna to have to use the modes to make it sound more interesting. So for our examples, we are gonna use the first eight bars of the song Impressions or the song So What. They're the exact same eight bars. For the alto sax, it is a B minor seven. Uh, for the tenor sax, that would be an E minor seven. So for our B minor seven, we are gonna use our Dorian minor scale. So why are we gonna use Dorian instead of natural minor? In the melody, there is a G sharp, which is your sixth. So it's your major sixth, and because the melody has a major sixth, that is screaming Dorian minor. So you have to use your Dorian minor scale. So we're gonna play between B and B with the F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. And if you're a tenor player, you're playing between E and E with the F sharp and the C sharp. So our first strategy for improvising over a modal tune is just play the scale. So in this case, we would just play the B Dorian minor scale. Now the problem with that is it's gonna get boring very, very quick because for every course of this song, there are gonna be 24 measures of B minor seven. That's a lot to come up with when you're just using those notes in that one order. Okay, so let's play an example of the B minor seven just using the B Dorian scale as a B Dorian scale. sounded fine. It was super inside. It was all correct. And if you're only playing it uh, for those 16 measures that I just played it for, it would sound fine and it wouldn't start to feel boring probably until later on. But it's going to get boring very quick. So the first thing that we want to do is think about some of the other modes that are inside of your B Dorian scale. In other words, we're going to start on different notes in the scale. So the first one that we would obviously start on would be starting on the C sharp. So we're going to play between C sharp uh, and C sharp in the key of B Dorian minor. So C sharp to C sharp with F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. So the scale would sound like this. So this time when we play with the track, we're gonna use that as our main mode to play with. So even though it's the same notes, our goal notes, our important notes, are gonna be the chord tones with the C sharp minor seven. So it's gonna be C sharp, E, G sharp, and B and we're gonna be bringing those out and making it feel more like a C-sharp improvisation as opposed to the B minor improvisation. here it sounded way more interesting like it had kind of an outside feel to it it didn't sound so just like locked in so I was playing it for the full 16 measures that's normally not what I would do I would play it for a couple measures and then go back to the B Dorian minor and then find another mood so I'd be kind of like weaving in and out of the moods to make it sound different and more interesting but let's do it with another mood before we uh, do the weaving so to speak so the next mode we would do would be starting on the three. Now when we start on the three, it gives us a super cool sound because it's a Lydian scale. When we play that uh, B Dorian minor starting on D, 
It gives us a D scale with a G sharp. So if we bring out our D, our F sharp, and our A, and our C sharp as our main chord tones, and then throw that G sharp in there for a little bit of grit, it's going to make it sound way outside and super hip. a super cool outside sound. Now, I don't want to go through all of the modes, but that's exactly what you can do. You could start on the E. The F sharp. The G sharp. The A. Any of those modes are going to sound really good. Now the trick is weaving between them. So in this next example, I'm going to start off in C sharp, then I'm going to bring it back to B, and then I'm going to bring it to D. So I'm going to do my second mode, back to the one, back to the three. three different colors in there when I'm improvising. You can hear me improvising on the two, on the three, and then the one. So it makes it way more interesting. Now the next step would be using the chords and jumping around throughout. So you're just kind of weaving through chords based on each of the scale tones. So these would be your chords. So I'm going to use those notes and I'm going to use chord tones and improvise and I'm going to make it sound like the chords are changing by the way I jump through the modes. So by doing that, you make it sound way more interesting. It doesn't sound like you're just playing one scale at all. It sounds like you're weaving through all this stuff and you've got all these different chords going on where really you're just playing the chord outlines in the key of B minor going throughout the modes. Now your last step to make it sound more interesting is just throwing some chromaticism in there. So chromaticism will work just about anywhere as long as you start on a chord tone and end on a chord tone. So if I was starting on an A, uh, which would be the seven, I could end on the F sharp, which would be the fifth, and I could go chromatic in between. Or uh, the fifth to the third. Or the third to the one. So that's a really good starting point with chromaticism. There are definitely other things you could do, but those are the safest bets to get started. So this time I'm going to play mainly with the B uh, Dorian minor scale, but I'm going to throw some chromaticism in there. So again, that's just another strategy to try to make it sound more interesting and not only use your B Dorian minor scale. So let's take a listen combining all of these strategies. See if you can pick out when I am doing each one. I will be using, of course, the B Dorian minor scale. Then I'll be using moods. I'll be using the full scales. Uh, then I'll be weaving through chords and I'll throw in some chromaticism. <laughs>
trick to making modal improvisation sound really good is surprisingly using your modes. So you want to make sure you're using your modes, doing chords, doing scales, throwing in a little bit of chromaticism here and there, and just trying to break up the monotony of the one scale solo. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you now understand how to make modal improvisation sound way cooler, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and share it with your friends. Comments are also very welcome because they help me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks a lot. Thank <laughs> you.